with help from Eric Wolf and Darius Dixon Kinder A Gas. In Montreal Americans are looking forward to a little RR with family for Thanksgiving, but diplomats from around the world are gathering in Montreal throughout the week to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Montreal Protocol and to discuss the next steps at curbing emissions of extremely potent greenhouse gases. They're likely to be in an ebullient mood since reaching the 21-country threshold to ratify the Kigali Amendment, which calls for the rapid phase-down in production and use of hydrofluorocarbons. It will now go into effect in 2019. Story continued below a key issue to watch during the talks is the money promised for the multilateral fund, through which rich nations help developing ones with their efforts to phase out HFCs. The U.S. has dropped its support for international efforts like the Green Climate Fund, so we'll see if this agreement, which has significant support among industry groups, avoids the same fate. It will be a good week for America if our diplomats come to Montreal to celebrate the achievements of the last 30 years, contribute generously to the fund, and announce plans to stay the course on Kigali, NRDC's David Doniger wrote in a blog post. An agenda for the meeting is available here. One observer's thoughts We expect the protocol this week to stay on the course first set by Reagan, Thatcher, and Mulroney 30 years ago, tackling all the key issues, including funding for phasing out chemicals that nations have agreed to eliminate, said Derwood Zalka, president of the Institute for Governance and Sustainable Development. No one wants to see this workhorse treaty fail, and it won't. SWEARINGIN Watch ME is on high alert for FERC News today. A couple of clue Dan sources tell us that President Donald Trump has finally signed off on Kevin McIntyre, the incoming chairman, and Rich Glick getting sworn in at FERC, setting the stage for them to take office as soon as today. The pair were confirmed by the Senate on November 2 but floated in limbo for reasons unclear to ME, providing plenty of grist for the rumor mill. In order for McIntyre to officially take the gavel, the White House needs to issue a separate chairman designation. So keep an eye out for that. It's almost turkey time and your host Antonia Dragner, and QEP resources Shane Schultz was first to identify 1777 as the year the Continental Congress issued its first national proclamation of Thanksgiving. For today Norman Rockwell's iconic Thanksgiving painting See It Here first appeared in which magazine send your tips, energy gossip and comments to our Dragner at politico.com, or follow us on Twitter at Antonia Dragner, at morning. Energy and at Politico Pro. Programming note Morning Energy will not publish from November 23rd, November 26th. Our next Morning Energy newsletter will publish on November 27th. Please continue to follow Pro Energy issues here. Mark your calendar Politico is partnering with women old businesses in the DC metro area to offer a full week of exclusive perks in conjunction with the 5th Annual Women Rule Summit. Join the fun at participating businesses during Women Rule Week November 27th to December the 1st for exclusive deals and tweet 5x using Women Rule for a chance to win two free tickets to the summit on December 5th. Listen to the latest Women Rule podcast featuring Glamour editor in Chief Cindy live here. Gimme Water The new U.S. and Mexico water-sharing agreement for the Colorado River has given a further nudge to southwestern states to help shore up the declining water reserves, pros Esther Wielden reports. The deal, called Minute 323 and signed in September, changed procedures governing how much water each country can take during times of drought, but Mexico also agreed cut its offtake even deeper during shortages if Nevada, Arizona and California agree to a voluntary drought contingency plan to bolster Lake Mead's water levels. But internal squabbles among the states are hampering the odds of them inking an agreement they hope to sign by next summer. Minute 323 was a big step forward and it put an additional weight on the scales for pushing forward for the drought contingency plan, said Ted Kowalski, director of the Colorado River Initiative at the Walton Family Foundation. Arizona, Southern Nevada and Southern California have all been drawing more water than the river can replenish in recent years and climate change is expected to further strain water supplies, adding further pressures to reach an agreement. Pruitt very disappointed by Keystone spill during an appearance Wednesday on Fox News Radio. EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt hailed Tuesday's approval by Nebraska regulators of a key permit for the Keystone XL pipeline but said he was very disappointed by the 210,000-gallon spill from a portion of the original Keystone pipeline last week. There needs to be some accountability there, but very, very excited about the approval overall of the pipeline, he said.
Meanwhile, South Dakota regulators raised the possibility of revoking the pipeline's permit in their state if a probe determines TransCanada violated its license, Reuters reports. TransCanada has yet to disclose the cause behind the spill. Pruitt also defended efforts to cut down on agency spending. We can afford to cut our budget, he said. We are cutting the job done but at the same time doing it in a fiscally responsible way. Check this out. Pro's data point has created a stunning graphic looking at the geographical distribution of nearly 3,100 pipeline spills around the country during the last seven years. It also breaks them down by the substance released. Check it out here. New nominee named before heading off to Florida for Thanksgiving, Trump announced his selection of Phyllis L. Byer of Mississippi to be an assistant secretary of the Navy for installations, energy and the environment. She was most recently chief of staff in the office of the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Readiness and has held a variety of defense-related roles before that. Brownfield's ready-to-roll House lawmakers appear ready to tackle a modified version of legislation H.R. 3017-115 that reauthorizes EPA's Brownfield's program, with a Rules Committee hearing slated for next Tuesday at 5 p.m. The measure cleared the Energy and Commerce Committee back in June by voice vote and a summary of modifications since then is available here. No RFS with your turkey this year The White House was still reviewing the 2018 Renewable Fuel Standard volumes as of Tuesday morning, so it seems we'll all be free to get the turkey basted and the cranberry sauce made in advance of our Thanksgiving feast this year, or at least get on the road early. RFS watches will recall the Obama administration made for a stressful pre-holiday when it released the 2017 volumes the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Pruitt still has plenty of time to make the November 30th deadline, which falls a full week after those giant balloons float down Fifth Avenue. Blast from the past MEDIDNT have space for this last week, but Sen. Jim Inhofe told an interesting story about why Sen. Roger Wicker was the lone senator back in 2015 to vote against an amendment that climate change is real and not a hoax. He walked in after it was over, he didn't know what that was about, Inhofe says. Hell admit that, although he enjoyed being the one out of a hundred. At the time, the Mississippi Republican said he refused to participate in a political show vote so voted against the amendment. Your call environmental advocates and EPA have been sparring over which circuit court should consolidate the lawsuits over two TSCA rules, but the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit said Wednesday in an order that it would defer ruling until the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit weighed in on the matter. Background from Pro's Alex Gillen here. More time given the National Park Service has extended the public comment period through December 22 on its proposal to sharply increase fees associated with use of national parks. The comment period was originally slated to end on Thanksgiving. In a statement, NPS said it had already received more than 65,000 comments and extended the deadline to accommodate interest in this issue from members of Congress and the public. More information here. Mail call questions, raise, over, trophy, and 22 Democratic senators asked Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke nine specific questions about the status of the administration's ban on importing elephant and lion trophies from Zimbabwe and Zambia, and demanded he formally halt any reversal of it. While we appreciate that additional reviews may be underway, the fact remains that tweets alone do not constitute substantive federal policy without commensurate agency action and do not negate the need to file appropriate public notice, they wrote. Days after the administration said it would lift the ban, Trump appeared to back away from the decision in a series of tweets this week. Zinke slams phony photo a fake image circulating online purporting to show Zinke in front of a killed elephant drew condemnation from the Interior Secretary. The only thing I've hunted in Africa is terrorists. Go to no bagging limit, he tweeted. M-A-I-N-E-R-S push Collins on D-O-U-R-S-O-N-A group of main scientists asked Sen. Susan Collins to formally oppose Michael Dawson's nomination to run EPA's chemical office. Professor Dawson has no business in any position at the EPA, they wrote. The EPA cannot protect our land, air and water if it is led by officials who oppose those goals. Remember Collins said last week SHES leaning against the nomination, which would sink it. Walden, Chabot Press EPA on Small Business Contracting House Energy and Commerce Chairman Greg Walden and Small Business Chairman Steve Chabot asked Pruitt what his agency is doing to ensure it complies with requirements to spend a certain amount of its outside research and development obligations on small business funding. 
Link here. More enforcement discretion in Puerto Rico EPA said Wednesday it would continue to exercise some enforcement discretion from some Clean Air Act permit conditions and permitting requirements for Puerto Rico's utility through January 31, 2018 as the island continues to recover from Hurricane Maria. Extending the enforcement discretion for local power facilities is an important step to ensuring power is restored in communities across Puerto Rico, Pruitt said in a statement. Sierra Club pushes Corker, Flake, McCain on taxes The Sierra Club launched digital ad campaigns across Tennessee and Arizona in hopes of getting Republican cents. Bob Corker, John McCain and Jeff Flake too opposed their chamber's tax package, which the group described as a misanthrope stream and a nightmare for our country. Newspaper ads hit Pierce The New Mexico Wildlife Federation has taken out full-page newspaper ads in the state attacking Rep. Steve. Pierce over his public lands record, especially his vote in favor of H.R. 3990-115 in committee that would overhaul the Antiquities Act. Read the ads here. B.A.R.R.A.S.S.O. makes the Great Environment and Public Works Committee Chairman John Barrasso is among the recipients of Vice President Mike Pence's first contributions to the 2018 midterm election cycle, Politico's Alex Eisenstadt reports. Barrasso, who potentially faces several primary challenges, thanked Pice in a tweet. Y-O-U-R-E out Jerry Corley resigned as CEO of the North American Electric Reliability Corporation effective November 20 following his arrest earlier this month for domestic violence. In a statement, NERC said Charles Berardesco will continue to serve as interim CEO, and an outside firm will lead its search for a new chief. Look who dropped by Energy Secretary Rick Perry met with his immediate predecessor Ernest Moners on Wednesday just before Thanksgiving. Picture here complete with awkward-looking handshake. Quick hits. Donald Trump's grandfather was likely a climate change refugee. Vice. Oil legend Andy Hall will brief OPEC on U.S. shale. Bloomberg. California appeals court overturns oil refinery expansion lawsuit. ABC 23 Bakersfield, Fiat Chrysler, any cooperating on emissions reductions. App, Venezuela leans on foreign partners for oil to feed its refinery sources. Reuters, jury picked in pipeline trespassing trial for climate change activist. Great Falls Tribune, Russia, in reversal, confirmed radiation spike. New York Times, that's all for ME. <laughs>